Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you all today on this Saturday morning. Trust you're all well. Lovely to see you, Lani, Liz, Yvette, Hodgkinson, Robert, Angie, Lorena, morning Tracy, Tracy and Robert are so faithful. Thank you. Claire, Stuart, Wynn, Renell, Almin, Catherine Harlock, Jill Wilmot. Hello, Shirley. Welcome, Andre. It's wonderful to see you. Hi, Helga. Cheryl Fanikak. Hi, Debs. Pamela Isaac. Karen Christensen. Yes, a very, very big happy birthday to Shirley Momberg. Have a wonderful day, Shirley. Enjoy your birthday. Oh, somebody's try, tried to phone me there for a minute. Um, Yvette, we've seen Rona, lovely. Lydia, lovely to see you. Ansel, good morning. Beautiful Sally, good morning. Ah, oh, that's great. Hmm. <laughs> Good for you, Liz. Oh, Pamela says, Good morning from a very wet Chester. Hmm. Excuse me as I grab other glasses. Let's see which ones work today. How about those? Those are Benny Book for them. Little round Benny Book for them. <laughs> Works with my scarf, so that's fine. <sighs> Morning, Glennis. <laughs> Thank you, Renal. <laughs> I'm finding my new self, Renal. Feel like I'm coming out of my grave clothes at last. <laughs> mm. Rhonda says, "Beautiful morning in Port Elizabeth. Lovely." Isn't it great that it's Saturday? That we in weekend. Natasha Fester Victor. Is it coffee time? Do you bring your coffee with? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. When I look at um, my YouTube channel, it seems that when, wherever I switch it on, here I'm, sta I'm standing with coffee. That's so crazy. Nice to see you, Jenny. And I got to see that very special young man <laughs> last night. Uh. Lorena says, gorgeous day in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is longing. Oh. Yeah, cheers, Hada. Lovely to see you, Neville. There's about five of you guys online now. That's awesome. Come on, guys. Get your friends online. Just because I'm female doesn't mean it's a woman's morning. Come, come, come. Share it with the guys, please. Helen. Yes, grab yourself a coffee. Veronica Goodyear, that's awesome. Special woman of God, resilient and just going for Jesus every day. Awesome.
Oh, that's such a lovely message from Angie to Shirley. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. I still remember always calling you Hi, Joe Bull. <laughs> and now you, Joe Bransby. <laughs> and a long time already. Hi, Lara Botma. Well, there's 39, nearly 40 of you, and I don't think I will delay. I think we should open in prayer. Precious Jesus, wonderful Savior, there is none like you. You are so faithful, faithful in all your ways. Faithfully, you saved us, faithfully, you keep us, and faith faithfully, you complete us and present us before the Father. We have so much to rejoice and be, be grateful for because your blood, your blood has forgiven us and your blood sets us free from all diseases in this body, this tent that we walk in on the earth. And thank you that the enemy is underneath our feet. We just love you so much, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit and Papa God. Three-stranded cord that cannot be broken. Thank you for your grace and your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Veronica. Great to see you, Tara Mills. Have you got a date that you will fly? Ethne Clark. Okay, so what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Let's put the music a little bit softer. There we go, so it's not too cumbersome. Your ears have to listen to all kinds of things. Um, happy anniversary. Who is that now, Angie? Tell me. Uh, two legends, you and your man were, a, oh, it is um, uh, Enna. No, yes, I know Enna and her husband would have been celebrating today. He's in heaven. No, 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 no. It's not our anniversary, Angie. I've just... Um, encouraging people to move beyond politeness to a place of acknowledging that we have emotions and we don't have to apologize when it's already like 20 months and we're still in the process of healing and uh, and to know that when you lose a spouse you've cut it feels like your arms and legs were cut off and your heart was gouged out and that we will be mindful of one another's journey so that's lovely yes thank you Alfie it's quite um we've set into winter now and uh, this is personal but the new fashion now is the it's quite, it looks like your jacket's almost a bit too big it feels like it's got it but it's not that's just the way it is so this is the new thing okay I love I love clothes. I feel how you dress is art. I feel how you express in your home is art and creativity. What we put on canvas or on material or in writing displays the creativity of God in everything that we do. So never hold back in being who God has created you to be. And that's male and female. Um, my husband used to love his skinny jeans and his scarves and jackets. He was a a good dresser and he always said to me when you are short as a man you've got to make up to make up um, an entry you've got to make sure that you dress well and I just love that and he said um, his pastor friend uh, taught him that I know who he's talking about and um, from Good Hope Christian Center Neville and Neville always said because he's also not a very tall guy and he always said if you're a short guy you better just dress immaculately because it 
it makes a statement if you're a short man. Isn't that incredible? And um, yeah, and so guys, you just go for it. Just display the fullness of who God created you to be. Do not be an apology, but be a bold statement that when you walk in, people think, who is that person? Who are they? They look distinguished or they look different to everybody else. And yes, it is. We are different and it is so because we are children of the King. And the beauty, it comes from the inside out that there's a radiance on our faces and light in our eyes and joy in our heart in spite of what you are walking through at this time. We, um, we count it all joy that we have a hope and a future and an expected end. Isn't that just amazing? It's lovely to see you, Philippa. Uh, and so yesterday and the day before, we've been looking at, um, we've been looking at Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, and how the Lord, um, how the Lord taught uh, Ezekiel how to decree and declare what was dead and dry and lying in the valley to come back systematically. It wasn't in one swoop. It was systematically calling the bones back together, calling the sinew and the flesh. And then when that all happened, then they stood up as an exceedingly great army, but they had no breath in them. And so you can look the part, but if your, if your uh, love tank, if your wine skin, if your, you know, the, the stream and the river of God inside of you is not flowing, then you look like an army, but there is no weight in the authority that God has put on us. And so this is a wonderful, wonderful revelation of, uh, phew, yeah, <laughs> oh my word, yes, so true, so true, Renal. The wind, breath of God blew me away. Yes, we've been feeling it um, throughout these last few days in our homes. Suddenly, we'll just feel this wind on our faces. And it's been amazing, amazing, so beautiful. And, and, and so we don't want to just look at the word and read it as a story. It's the, Jesus was the word, is the word, and he became the living word. But there's an anointing on the reading of the word and a revelation that the Holy Spirit brings when we read it. And I suggest that when you start to read the word, you pray and ask Holy Spirit to come in revelatory power and understanding and wisdom and to unlock. Isaiah was a book of the, of the Bible that my husband, when he was um, studying for ministry, that he found quite difficult. And he went before the Lord on his knees in his study. And he said, it sounds very posh, in his study. You know what he did? <laughs> we lived in this little townhouse and it had no built-in cupboards. So we went to the second-hand shop at some stage and we bought a three-door cupboard that him and I had to share. We were young, we had one, by the time he went into ministry, we had one baby and uh, later on the other two. But um, so he brought this old brown cupboard home and him and I shared that cupboard. And then um, as life increased and we had our babies, the rooms were full. And so what he did then is he split the cupboard. So it was a two door cupboard and a one door cupboard. And he put uh, two pieces of wood in between and he made a shelf where he sat and did all his work and all his studies in our bedroom. Was it irritating, ladies? It was irritating. It was so irritating because the books just stay there and the concordances are piling up on the floor and 
then later on the printer and the computer and I would be trying to sleep and the printer would be going ee, 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 in the old days of those old printers and you're just like oh my gosh <laughs> I can't bear it because we are mainly women but there are men as well that like order there are a lot of people that cannot operate where there's chaos and so you can see that God in creation had a total order, a order. And so when he said, he first asked the question to Ezekiel to get his attention, can his bones live? And then he instructed him what to prophesy, piece by piece by piece. And there was an absolute order. And you can see that in creation in Genesis as well. First, the... Uh, the separation of the waters and the lights and and then uh, the, the animal life and all in their own kind you can see it in the ark when they go into the ark a male and a female of every species and every kind um, God just creates doesn't create things that are going to uh, spin out of order if we see things sp uh, sp uh, sp uh, sp spinning um, out of order then and it brings chaos it brings confusion and so if you are going through a season of confusion because you're coming out of the old but into the new and everything is beginning to come against you how must i do it when must i do it all i can say to you is take one instruction at a time when my husband passed away i had to then i was the executor of the estate it sounds very lani but um we don't don't own a property any longer because we sold our property a little townhouse and put the money into educating our children and the ministry and we've never got back into the property market now the lord has promised us through various prophets that there will be another house and in fact he said Many years ago, when we still had the house, he said, Rose, I will give you the house of your dreams. It'll have everything that opens and shuts. But first you have to finish the race. In other words, uh, he said, and then you will settle down and write books in your old age. So I obviously haven't got there yet because the house hasn't arrived. <laughs> God is still waiting for me to get old <laughs> um, and so I used to ask the Lord for a bond I'm please gonna have a bond I want to buy that house and then as my age went on you I can't get a bond any longer because I have to prove that I'm gonna have income for the next 20 years which will make me like 85 <laughs> So I said to the Lord, well, then that prophecy, in fact, lot of use that was, it looks like I missed it. And the Lord said to me, I didn't ask you to ask for a bond. Start asking for a house. You have not got your ask not, and when you ask, you ask amiss. <laughs> so... And it's also an age thing, Angie. Angie says, one instruction at a time. I like that. I can't deal with more than that now. It's not so much an age thing as a trauma thing, Ange. And so I had to do a step at a time by going to the master's offices and hand in, um, hand in the will and hand in an inventory of what Lionel owned, um, his cars, car, uh, one car on our son's name and one on his name. And um, I went there in fear and trembling, not knowing. I only went twice. I went the first time and they required some more stuff. And I went the second time and they signed it off and said, you go on and live your life. And I said, don't I have to do this, this and this? And they said, no nothing it's not complicated and we were married in community of property so i really thought it was going to be calculated on what the two of us own together i don't 
own any more than what he owned. <laughs> but anyhow, and so that was it. That was it. And so now I just go on and love God, trust God, and he's my provider. I know for women, they believe that they're going to marry Oh, this light on my glasses. They believe that they're going to marry a prince. I did have a prince, don't get me wrong. And you see this prince coming along. <laughs> oh. And the prince comes and sweeps her up and takes her to a castle and provides for her every whim. And leaves her this huge legacy. <laughs> Doesn't always work that way. So whatever you're going through at this moment, it's one step at a time. One decision at a time. Trauma is debilitating. My little dog was at the vet the day before yesterday. Yorkies are hunt for rats and mice that's what they their function is they used to use yorkies in the big uh, factories like the cotton factories and so they if they sniff something that they want they will dig until they get it And so we have a big wooden fence between us and the farmer next door. And she'll often dig. And when she starts hiding away and licking, 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 then I know that um, something's on the go. And so the little nail on the side got damaged on both feet. So now she's had both um, operations on both feet. And they've removed the nail and so that it won't grow back. But because of trauma of going in the ambulance with my husband for all those years, three years, I cannot take this dog to the vet. I just cannot. I will just say to Jess, the dog needs this. No problem. I'll take your dog. <laughs> she even takes the dog to the doggy parlor because I don't want to see her restrained in any way but she's got used to it she doesn't need to be restrained she actually loves going to the doggy parlor and so at first I would have thought it's an age thing that you've had so much life already that if something has to be decided on you want to withdraw but I think it comes with not just with life but it comes with trauma that you you just feel I can't face another hurdle and so here was Ezekiel in this valley of dry bones with the Lord. And the Lord didn't say, Ezekiel, my word says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. All I need of you is that you play your part. Because that is the statement over life. Well, if you play your part, God will do the rest. If you get up and do this, God will do the rest. If you do this, God will do that. God has already done it before the foundation of the earth. We just have to realize who we are and stand in it. There is a very strong spirit on the earth to dial men down to boys and women down to girls. To go back into your little boy or little girl persona. Especially if somebody more beautiful, more handsome, more educated, or more wealthy steps into the crowd. Those that feel they don't match those criteria subconsciously, not consciously, begin to withdraw. You'll see it on the body movement and you'll see it in the level of conversation. But I do want to say to you that the Father says that we are not to be terrified by the faces around us. He said this to Jeremiah, another amazing prophet. And he said to Jeremiah, do not be afraid by the faces that, that you are facing. 
And he said, speak and I will fill your mouth with a good report. I am amazed when I meet with people in business and people even as high up as profs and in, in these hospitals and scientists. And, and I find myself using language that fits the scenario in areas that it's not my training. Because God says, he has all knowledge, all understanding, all wisdom. And if you lack, ask him and he will give it to you liberally. The other night on a live that I was doing with a group uh, in Dublin, suddenly I clicked into a word of knowledge where the father showed me the root of people's sicknesses, the medical root. If the lady said, I have terrible acne, it's a hormonal thing, and the Lord said to me, no, it's her gut. And I started to speak to her about her gut. She said, 100%. I said, that's the root. So Father is saying, do not, as uh, Joe is saying, Joe Bransbury, she's saying, yes, we tend to go back to, we tend to go back to default. And we default back to the little girl or the little boy because we can't compete with the players that we feel we can't compete with those players. And Father is saying, stand up, even in your valley of dry bones. There is a systematic order to go from dry bones to a place of an army with new breath. I have many people that say to me, they don't feel that they have the capacity any longer. And my question is this, are you still breathing? Are you still on the earth? then your time is now. Because if not, then you would have gone to heaven. While you are in this tent and on the earth, you still have a function. You still have a calling. You are going to excel in all your ways. You are going to excel in all your ways as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a mentor, as a counselor, as a friend, as a child of God. These are all callings that God has put on us. In your leadership, in your devotion, you will excel in all your ways when you understand that your leading in this dance ooh, comes from your bridegroom, Jesus. He invites us into this dance of life and he leads in this dance of life. And he is an exceptional leader. He makes you look like you've been dancing from your mother's womb. Anxiety causes us to speak whatever goes through our head. Anxiety takes us into panic. And panic takes us into confusion and confusion breaks us down. And that is a terrible condition. And I'm sure when Ezekiel looked at all those bones lying in heaps on the, in the dry valley, there was nothing in his carnal mind and no frame of reference from his past. We have a frame of reference. We say, if God did it for that one, he can do it for us. Of course, God raises the dead. We've got a frame of reference. There's no account that there was any other valley of bones. <laughs> and so the Lord says, now nah, do this. Now nah, say this. Now nah, say that. 
He has not left us without instruction. So on this beautiful Saturday morning, I'm inviting you to allow him to lead and only do one step at a time. One decision at a time, one live at a time, one journaling at a time, one concept, oh no, not concept, um, uh, I'll get the word just now, not just the information of who he is, but he, the, 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 the whole council. The counsel, the counsel of he, who he is. Let us position ourselves in the counsel of the king. There are some things that we lead in and the, the Holy Spirit is standing on the side with something much more amazing. Because we are taught... Um, to be responsible and be self-controlled. And that is true. That is true. He didn't give you a frontal lobotomy when you came to know. Frontal lobotomy is half your brain taken out. You have a mind, but your mind is subject to Christ. So last night I had a dream, which is not a surprise. Prophets dream a lot. Oh, this cup has got a lot of lipstick on it, eh? So, I had a dream that we were back in our old house, a big house in Fishwick on the Mountain, and which was a rental and a very nice old house. We enjoyed being there. And suddenly in the dream, at the back door, um, somebody put up a post to say, when you're on a live, but now it's gone. It was at the top of my screen. Somebody on WhatsApp. Okay, so as I went to the door, I could see that there was a man, an intruder trying to come in. And I had not, uh, in this door were two wooden stoppers that sort of turned into the wood like a wooden screw. It wasn't metal. A wooden screw, screw that screwed the door closed. It's a very old house and it seemed to be what they did in those days in the stream. But as I am trying to check that the two wooden bolts, the person on the outside pushed the wooden bolts and there was no longer thread and they were beginning to come out. So I held them both in. So that that person on the other side would perceive that it is locked. And so then I, um, after a while, I actually just opened the door. I confronted it. I'm like, what do you want? What are you doing here? And I didn't want to be too aggressive because I wanted to be able to win this person over out of a place of distraction or uh, threat. And I said, you can come in. We're about to have a meeting. You can come in. Come and join us. I'm not afraid of you. And during this meeting, another one, a skabanga, joined this guy. And at times, as I was ministering, I would look straight at them and I almost took them by their shirts. Uh, this really is bang for nicks, ex click for nicks, because we have authority. And I would say things to them. So then that part of the dream changed. And I was in a marketplace walking in the passages of like when we in Israel, in the markets, 
And there I saw these two guys again, who I let go at the end of the meeting. I said, go, but don't ever get in my face again. <laughs> so they left, but I saw them in the marketplace again. And when I looked, they were sitting at a table and they were about to skinive other innocent people. I went up and I pulled out the chair and I sat down. I said, hello, how's everybody? I didn't acknowledge them. So great to see you all. I think I'm going to have a coffee as well. And they were having coffee, but they did not recognize these guys as crooks. They were being all so sweetie, sweet, girly, girly. And the next minute I said, by the way, I'm paying for the coffees. You girls and guys that need to go and do stuff for the conference, you go, leave this to me. And they looked at me and I said, no, these aren't who you think they are. Go, I will see to this. And I started reading this to the riot act that they better not mess with the sons and daughters of God. That was the dream. And so I want you to know that I saw them the people sitting at the table, who's at your table, go back to their little Christian. We've got to bless everybody. And they didn't even know that the enemy was sitting at that table. There's two kinds of enemies. The enemy that is hidden and goes around stealing from you. And the enemy that will challenge you and not be hidden, but will manifest in your face. Just as there are personalities in our lives, introverted, so I, I say a child that throws a tantrum I can deal with because I can see what I'm dealing with. A child that displays outward rebellion, I can instruct. But a child that operates in hidden rebellion takes a lot more work in prayer and discernment to see what is trauma, what is hurt, what is disappointment, what is generational, and unravel the child from the influence of this, these things that operate around it. And so some of your enemies right now are hidden and you don't know what you're dealing with. Ask the Lord to expose the battle. Ask the Lord to reveal to you what you are dealing with. And then you can shut it down because you have authority. Not authority to entertain it. Authority to remove it out of your circumstances. Brokenness, trauma, rejection, fear of man, fear of failure, fear of abandonment. Um, all of these things have roots and they came in somewhere. My fear of man came as a little girl of as baby six. And my brother of three came running in at the organizing of a function and said that he found the wishbone that they used to paint silver and put on the wedding tables. And they would like, oh, what a cute little boy with blonde curls. And they were like, thank you, darling, you're so clever. I went back the same trail, found another one, ran in and they were like T -t 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 behind their hands about the fact that I was looking for attention and probably took it off a table. And I remember the righteous defense inside of me that I would never do that. That I operated out of a place of honest scales. And so 
that was really painful for me. So I started to not want to stand out or offer anything or any help because they're going to think that it came from the wrong source. Yeah. Amazing. And so it doesn't take, why does it take to be in your 60s or 40s or 30s to get to the root? Yes, we have his bloodline. Yes, those things are, the past is gone. The leg, leg was cut off. But I don't want even scar tissue. I don't want a default mode. And so now how, do, uh, how am I going to end this this morning? I'm going to end this by saying, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are the head and not the tail. I'm not done. Yesterday I said to my daughter-in-law that I've been battling the last 48 hours. And she said, are you okay? And I said, I've wrestled with what is the purpose of my life now. Now this sounds ridiculous to you. Can you and ministry and you're on live and we're going to send you lots of encouragement. That's not it. It's about my core, my core value, my core, 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 my identity in my womanhood, my identity in provision from the Lord. And I said, if I've got to live this life for another 10 or 15 or even 20 years, I said, it's just boring. It's boring. One day at a time, doing the little thing, and then I said, there's got to be a greater purpose. I said, I want my husband back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm an outward processor, so I will tell you all of this. And by the time I'm finished, they, that settles, you know. And so I said to her, I know what it is. I operate very well in, in, a, in I don't want to say in a program, in purpose. I operate well that I set my alarm and get up every morning because I'm an early riser. I don't even need to set the alarm. I wake up and I'm up by six o'clock. I love the cool of the morning. I love listening to the word. I love listening to my music. I like taking my time. And then by the time I'm ready to dress, it's probably about eight o'clock. And, uh, but if I don't have that routine, the anxiety can start. Don't be ashamed to say that you're battling with anxieties. Only when you recognize what you have can you be healed. Only when the Lord said to, to um, Ezekiel, he said, do you see that? Ezekiel, if he was living in the church today, would have said, mm, by faith they are whole. Yes, Lord, I see, but I know that in the next season in heaven, they will be whole again. I met a couple in the shops about three or four months ago now. Um, and this person said, um, would you like to do a coffee with us one Thursday? And I knew them well enough to say to them, not at the moment. I said, I must be honest. I'm battling with a social phobia. I was so shocked when it came out of my mouth. How do you know you have a social phobia? You're going to pick and pay, you see people you know, you quickly grab the potatoes, turn around, go to the till, and say, it doesn't matter, I will get a chicken another time, I don't want to see them. It's not because you're hateful, 
It's not because you're ugly. If you're battling with the social phobia, it takes you every inch and breath to show up. Praise the Lord that I've that's moved on now. I saw them in the shops and said to them, guess what? I'm ready for that coffee. The mountain's not big anymore. When you have to acknowledge that you're battling with a social phobia and get up and preach every day, you realize it's all the anointing. Thank you for responding and being as honest. One of my children of my three, of my womb, primary call in life, in a, in in the home and even in work and society, is to bring order. But it's not to bring order because of a bossiness. It's to keep order to the degree that that one can keep order so that everybody around this child, who's now an adult and married, will experience peace. Because this one's key personality, highest order of her personality is peace. So they will anticipate what could happen and get it all done so that peace prevails. Rhonda, I want to say to encourage you and say to you that I met you without being introduced to you. I met you seeing you and a precious friend of yours walking on Fisher Beach many, many years ago, and the two of you went to the bistro and sat down and you had, I think it was like a leather handbag, but it looked more like a briefcase. And the two of you sat down, the sharpest woman I've ever seen. And I said in my spirit, I want a word for these women because I want to get in here because they are not ordinary women. These women have been called to ministry. I never ventured over. Your conversation and your coffee finished and off you went. And then I started inquiring, who are these two women? And your time isn't over, Rhonda. You have so much to give. Hilary, yes, she says, me, peace above all, harmony, Mrs. Fixit. Exactly, exactly. And people that don't understand that will think you're out organizing everything. And it's not that at all. Your core value is that you want everybody to enjoy it with great harmony and peace. You'll never believe. Hi, Eve. Lovely to see you. I will. I will keep going. And uh, this is my safe place because truly what Father has put inside of me can just come out in front of the camera. I'm fine with that. And my sister Lorraine Burt is online. And Lorraine, we're speaking about stress and anxiety and how people like us that battle with phobias like social phobias or because of damage and hurt, how we cope well with routine because if we don't <laughs> love ourselves enough to have a routine we would while the day away in our beds and i've had some of those days and they're not bad for us there are days that loving myself means doing my life switching it off putting on my baggiest clothes climbing into my bed with netflix and popcorn i don't feel guilty about it at all <laughs> It's nurturing. 
but you don't want to be sleeping the day away, day in and day out and day in and day out. And so you will start with one goal. Anybody that's done amazing things for God did not, they were not necessarily born into that. Their, their personality might be high achievers and they just go, go, go. And that's fine. But if you don't look at the life of many of these um, famous preachers and evangelists and revivalists, and see it was one step at a time. It was one step at a time. We need to ask ourselves the question, what is it that you want to achieve in this life? And then work back, go step backwards and work towards it. Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. Make what you want to achieve measurable. I am the go-getter that says to you, all the time I say, it must, the dream must be so big that it scares you spitless. I've changed my mind as I've got older. I say the dream must be God, God's dream, and for us, it's one step or one bite at a time. People are not looking for fast. People are not looking for, for frenetic. People are not, they're looking for doable. They're looking for people that will stop long enough to encourage them. They're put, looking for people that will point them back to answers and the answers have to be in this word. What does the Lord say about it? Counseling needs to be biblical counseling. With a prophetic edge, because the Father will speak an apt word. It says apples of silver in settings of gold, or apples of gold in settings of silver. That's wisdom and counsel. Religion forces us to do particular things to prove that we are excelling in God. Well, did you pray for three hours? Don't you know Smith Wigglesworth does? Did. <laughs> Do you pray walk in, in your town? Don't you know? That's what we're meant to be doing. Uh, uh, are you keeping a journal? Are you keeping a diary? Always remember that what you minister, you minister from your, um, your gifting. Mine will be prophesy, 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 prophesy. Why don't you prophesy? Anybody can prophesy. You should prophesy and you should paint. It's nothing to paint. Pick up a brush. Paint, paint and prophesy. Paint, paint and prophesy. Because my, the carrier of my call is in that area. If the carrier of your call for in Jesus is teaching, you will be going, do you study the word? You need to study the word every day. I hope you get up an hour early to study the word. Are you writing it down? Are you reciting it? Are you putting it on your fridge? Are you reminding yourself? The, because their carrier is teacher. If your carrier gift is evangelism, you go, how many people got saved in this lockdown? Are there any figures about who got saved? Who's discipling them? When are we going to get out there and win the loss? This being stuck in our home with closed doors is nonsense. <laughs> carrier is evangelism. Pastors, I will say to a, a, a primarily pastoral gifting, I will say that person has gone around that mountain long enough now. We need to prophesy them and move them on in their journey. And the pastor and pastoral anointing will say, oh, the poor little lamb, poor little lamb. You know, they've been through so much. But, uh, oh, my precious baby. <laughs> and I go, no, I want to shake them. Get the demons out, get the thing out, let them move on. Depending on the gift, the carrier of your anointing. Are you still out there? Because nothing's moving on my screen. 
I can't see any more comments. I just want to know that you're all okay out there. I see these 77 of you online, but you're very quiet. That's quite right, Rhonda. It was Suzette Owen. I've since then met her. She's a lovely, lovely lady. Fabulous friend. Thank you. Letting me know you're still out there. So don't let people break you down when you're battling in an area of your life and say it's all demonic. That's demonic. How can you take that tablet? That's demonic. Christians shouldn't battle with this. We are body, mind, and spirit. And in the mind is the intellect and the will. And the body is the body with all its, all its frailties. When, you, when you're 50, you think like a 30-year-old, but your body doesn't cooperate, and so it goes. And you do have to speak over that body. And your spirit is your spirit, and your spirit is whole, and your spirit is alive, and your spirit has dreams, and your spirit is led by the Spirit of God. But the body and the mind have to follow. And so we do need to build ourselves. How do you build yourself up in the most holy faith? Speaking to yourself in hymns and songs and spiritual, and spiritual, what does it say? And spiritual, can't remember. Then, Rabbi Shanda, Father, I ask you to build me up. I thank you, Father, that this anxiety is not going to be my battle today. Today, I'm going to stand in freedom. I thank you that you are busy healing me. I thank you, Father. And then you need to ask the Lord, what is it besides trauma and hurt what is happening in your hormonal system what is happening in the chemicals in your body i ask you father to heal my gut so that i do not have spin outs of anxiety because most of life is in the gut and i ask you father to adjust my body tell me what supplements i need to take father show me what i need to eat uh, get the book um um eating god's way and have a look at what's going to feed your body. If you only have it while you're on the earth, you may as well look after it. <sighs> I am closing. Every day I want to keep the, uh, it shorter, not only because it takes up your data. Some of you said, so what? You've got enough data. But also that people, when they see a message is an hour long, they won't even click on it. They want eight minutes, 17 minutes, and that's it. And so, but no, but we're on a journey. It doesn't matter what others think. Eh? It's what we are busy with. And it's so wonderful to uh, just together, just together, to just be doing Jesus together. So wonderful. Lovely that um, in Ezekiel 38, I, I opened here wanting to go to 37, but my eyes fell on this. And it says here, we were saying yesterday about, Lord, uh, bless all the lands with, of the Bible, you know, from Turkey to this place and to that place, and even to Egypt and Israel. And then in Ezekiel 38 verse 7, it says, prepare yourself and be ready you and all your companies that are gathered about you and be a God for them. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which have long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many people with you. <laughs> Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. Okay, so we won't go up there, but it's lovely that God is saying after all the storms we're going through that he will gather us. 
he will gather us. That even though we feel scattered, or even though we feel like the bones in the valley. Angie, I just felt the Holy Spirit quicken this. He said the reason why you suffer with social anxiety at this time is because you are burnt out in being needed. I know that's the root. And so you want to extend yourself, but you, every time you do, somebody requires something from you. They require you to pick up their load. You re they require you to give them that word. They require you to battle with them. And um, in early days of ministry, that was what you wanted. That filled your love tank. But now, uh, after pouring out for so many years, you're going, mm -mm, I can't. And I feel like God is going to change the shape of the ministry that is on your life. I'm not sure if it's writing or releasing new music or maybe doing a Facebook Live, but I feel that God is going to protect you having to show up physically at every occasion. I feel like it's a time that heaven's going to pour its rain on you and water those places that have been so dry. I, I, I'm going to say honestly, I feel that in all the groups and churches you belong to and led, there's been a lot of abuse. And because you have such a giving heart, you just keep giving and keep giving and keep giving. And Father says, this is a season of replenishment. I will replenish you, my daughter. I will refill you and refuel you not for another battle and not for another appointment. I'm loving on you because you are my beloved. I'm loving on you because you are my precious daughter. There are many of you that can um, identify with this prophetic word. We want to get better and we want to get better quickly because there's work to be done. Resign from that model. You are children of God. He celebrates you. He's going to give you a party. People are even teaching, if you don't excel in this life, you won't have any authority in heaven. And we're so authority driven that we will do every course and everything that we know to do because we never want to lag behind. We don't share what's on our heart unless it doesn't match that person's doctrine. And then we will be shamed. For me to use the wording, the counsel of heaven or the counsel of God or the courts of heaven, I had to do it with a, um, with a caution because I've been told by so many people that some of these teachings and using the word uh, vibration or... Yeah, there's just so many things you're not allowed to say. And they will say, those that teach will be of a double judgment. And being a woman and bringing stuff, they will first of all say that the word says women are not apt to teach. Because look, you're going off the course. Where are the 10 scriptures to back this up? And there are scriptures to back up that, I can assure you. So your womanhood, if you're a woman, your man, if you're a man watching today, you also will be marginalized because did you study? The woman will just be you're a woman, the Bible says. 
The man will be, where did you study? Have you got a degree? Did you do theology? We share out of that deep place of a relationship that we have with Papa God. And as his word says, you don't, if you know Holy Spirit, you don't even have need of another teacher. And I'm not saying that in rebellion. But the Lord says, come, let us reason together. So there we have it, girls and guys. Your Saturday morning live has already come to an end. Time is up. <laughs> Father, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you for your love for us. Yes, we acknowledge that in many things that is said about your children in the word, not always our reality, that there are days of struggling and there are days of indecision and there are days of no routine and there are days of confusion and there are days of anxiety. And we would be fools to say that this is not so. We don't want to think as fools. We want to think with your mind, Lord Jesus. And so we pray that today is going to be an excellent day. That we're going to bring whatever it is that is that that has voices and speaks to us. That we are not going to make it. That the money will not last till you're 80. Or whatever that thing is for any of us. Or how will we go beyond lockdown? And we'll give, we give it to you this morning, Father. I pray for those that are, that are creative thinkers and like, oh, that's a wonderful idea. But I pray even more for those that are linear thinkers and need the evidence. And so, Father, we want to, we want to lie in the clouds of your grace today. Some of us are even disappointed, Lord, that we have been told by so many people that when we get to heaven, we're not going to lie on a cloud with a harp. We're going to work. And we're going, I thought it was my reward to just lie on the clouds. <laughs> Thank you that your word says, having done all stand. And Father, Psalm says that we mustn't sit in the council of the wicked or lie in the bed of scoffers. But I thank you that you call us to rest. That your word says to it, see to it that you do not fail to enter into my rest. In other words, that you are the one that goes ahead of us. You are the one that leads. You are the one that provides. You are the one that hems us in. You are the one that sends us kisses from heaven. You are the one that assures and reminds us that we are not what people say we are. We are only what who you say you, we, we are. And we are your choosing. You chose us first while we were yet sinners. And so, Father, we don't qualify by our own works. Our own works are like filthy rags in your sight. It's like Jesus plus. We do works because there's an overflow of gratitude. And it's our joy and it's who we are and who you've created us to be. I cancel any condemnation for those that are watching and are not involved in the feeding scheme right now and they feel guilty and they feel like I should be out there and Father if you have not instructed them let them stay in your peace that we do what you show us and we obey what you tell us and so we thank you for a squishy day of fluffy clouds wrap around comfort songs from heaven and big big dollops of healing from the fray of the battle thank you for your love thank you for your complete work you are the great i am we are those that are becoming but you already are i am we love you lord we thank you for your grace Amen. Amen. And amen. Have a wonderful day. Make popcorn. Watch a movie. Listen to music. 
I've got a new thing that I like. I play my normal music in the morning, but come here in the afternoon, I put on French cafe music, what you'll hear in France if you were walking in the streets and the cafes. And it's just so lovely. It makes me feel like I'm on holiday. Beautiful. Okay, love you all. Tomorrow morning being Sunday, the live at 10 o'clock will be on Word of Life page. So I will see you on Word of Life page at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Have an awesome day. God is awesome and he's made you awesome. Love you lots. Bye.